So I wanted to talk about the rig that's sitting right next to me here. And this is my wide field deep sky DSLR rig that I am so excited about for this spring and summer. I'm gonna keep this set up exactly in this configuration, not disassemble it, change things up. Just as it is, I can take the whole thing outside, use it, put it away, keep it all the same. I'm really excited about the fact that it's all gonna be ready to go when I need it. I mean, seriously, it's a, it's a grab and go. Like with the counterweight attached, it's actually not that heavy. I can carry the whole thing around. So if you can't tell, it's a William Optics Red Cat 51 refractor is the main imaging scope. Now that has a focal length of 250 millimeters. So that's very wide, but it's also deep sky. So enough to resolve the larger nebulae where you can actually get some detail in there, but more for capturing multiple objects in the night sky and star clouds and some of the really cool summer nebulae. That's what this telescope focal length excels in. So F4.9, so rather fast, which is important when I discuss the filter that's in here. Attached to the back is the Canon 60DA. You've heard me go on and on about this Canon astrophotography camera. So it's really great. It's a really exceptional camera. I've just been in love with the images I've taken with it. It's got the flip out screen, very capable. I mean, it's from 2012, but it's still one of the better DSLRs I have for astrophotography. It's got the sensor that's sensitive to H alpha. So I know I'm collecting the important details on objects like emission nebulae. It's mounted to my old Skywatcher HEQ5 mount. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you're no stranger to this. You can see how the telescope mounts to the declination plate of the telescope mount. It's got the, just the little dovetail bar there. The newer ones actually have a longer dovetail bar, but it fits right in like this. The longer dovetail bar is nice because it gives you more options for balancing. Of course, when you're doing deep sky astrophotography, you want to have a good balance in declination. So that's just releasing this clutch here and see how it's kind of falling forward right now. It's a little unbalanced. So you just slide it down a little bit. So you want it balanced in both axes, ideally. So here's the RA and here's the declination. So the tracking mount doesn't have to work any harder than it needs to to track your object while you're shooting it. So this is how the camera is attached to the telescope, by the way. There's a T-ring adapter, a Canon EOS. So here's my DSLR here. And then the T-ring is this metal piece right here. And you need to get the right one for your camera to get the right spacing. And so it fits just like a lens would click on. There we go. And in front of that, I've got a filter drawer here, which is super handy to have for switching out filters. So I'm just gonna rotate the, using the rotator here. And then there's this little drawer that holds my filter. In this case, the OPT Triad Ultra. And I just slide it back in there. But if, when I wanna shoot some H alpha or anything, I just open this drawer out, put the H alpha filter in there, two inch filter and just slide it back in and I'm good to go rotate the camera back to where I want it. This is a really beginner friendly setup for the simple reason that star alignment and finding and framing targets is gonna be a lot easier with a wide field of view. So with that rather big image sensor on the DSLR and at 250 millimeters, even if you're a little bit off trying to find your target, you'll still see it in the frame and then you can fine tune it after that. As opposed to something like the Celestron Edge I recently talked about at 2800 millimeters, you're so deep, finding and framing targets becomes a lot harder. For this little mount, as long as it's polar aligned carefully, a one star alignment is all you'll need to slew to your object the first time. You use the hand controller, you punch in your object, say I'm shooting the Trifid Nebula in Sagittarius, I type in M20, and as long as it's star aligned and polar aligned, you'll see M20 appear in that first test exposure. You can be confident that it'll be in there. As for running this system, you could just use a little remote shutter release cable, plug it into the side here, and then you can take one or two minute exposures because you'll want to take longer exposure images with a system like this, especially with a quad band narrow band filter. I usually shoot my sub exposures from three to five minutes each. That's possible thanks to the auto guiding through this little guide scope and guide camera system and then the computer automation control. So I can set a sequence of images using a software called Astro Photography Tool. And as for, you know, plugging into the camera on this DSLR, it's just a mini USB cable. So I got a nice long one on Amazon. 
just plugs into the side here. And then when you connect the camera in the software, it will recognize that it's a Canon 60D. You can control the ISO settings and exposure length and even take your flats and bias and darks and everything all through the software, all automated. You can just leave it running. Just the connection for the guide scope here. This camera, it has an ST4 cable that is basically the uh, phone jack type cable. This one plugs into the camera on the back and then the other end into the auto guider port on the mount. That's gonna, ooh, listen to that wren. Beautiful, Carolina wren. And the guide camera just has one job to stay locked on a star and keep those steady exposures for four or five minutes in length. Really great, reliable, wide field nebula photography system. So the red cat, you might be wondering, it's, I don't even know if you can still find them anymore. Uh, it became, they had the upgraded version which had a few extra bells and whistles including this mount for a guide scope which is really important. Uh, but then there was also the space cat version which was like the red cat with someone took the desaturation slider all the way down. And then now I see that there's a night cat which is kind of the coolest looking version yet the black and blue version uh, that's coming out in around June. So it looks like they're still making these at this size which is great because it's almost in the category of like, I feel like everyone should own a Red Cat. It's just so capable in that sweet spot of 250 millimeter focal length. If you already have a camera lens that you're happy with that can shoot good astro, but it won't have a focuser like this one has and the mounting hardware. So really happy with the Red Cat, but you know, what else is new? You already knew that. So the filter is very important on this rig and I'm gonna keep this filter uh, for the entirety of the spring and summer, which is rare because normally you're swapping filters all the time. So mostly I'm gonna be using the Radiant Telescope's Triad Ultra filter. And the big reason for that with this combo is that last summer I shot with a 60DA, this Red Cat, and I tried out some nebulae and they're some of my favorite images I took last year, seriously. There's something about that multi-band pass filter, wide field nebulae and the Red Cat is just magical. So that's what gives me the confidence of this rig and why I'm so excited to use it again this summer and just spend more time with it. I've made some rules for myself like uh, don't finish a picture until you get six hours of integration. I've got a hit list of targets I wanna hit up. I can just be more strategic about this because I know this rig is gonna be ready to go at all times. A 250 millimeter focal length is really wide, so small targets are no good. Galaxies are just gonna be so tiny at this focal length. Even with that slight 1.6 crop of an APS-C sized sensor on the DSLR. This is best for massive objects. The only galaxies you're gonna shoot with this and it's big stuff like the Andromeda Galaxy or the Triangulum. Otherwise, it's wide field nebula is this thing's specialty. And the same thing goes for the filter used. It's a quad band, narrow band filter, so captures those specific gases and that's most useful in uh, emission nebulae and different types of nebulae in the night sky. So as for the, the ST4 cable, which you might be wondering about here, a lot of people uh, you know, prefer pulse guiding over the on-camera guiding through the ST4 cable. In my opinion, guiding is guiding. If you, you use it, you're gonna see the benefits of it. The difference between pulse guiding and the ST4 cable here is gonna be, you're not gonna be able to see that, especially at this focal length. So uh, guiding's important, dithering's important. And that's one of the reasons why I've chosen to use the HEQ5 as opposed to something like this, which I actually started suiting up for this rig, I'd plan to use the Sky Guider Pro like I did last summer a lot, but it's just a little too much, this rig is a little too much weight for uh, the Sky Guider Pro, even with the counterweight all the way down at the bottom, the extension, the nice hardware from William Optics. I really would have loved this because of course this is super light and portable, so that would have been great. I opted for the HEQ5 to use it just because even though it is a little bit heavier, I get that declination guiding and uh, it can support a little bit more weight. So it's unfortunate that I couldn't use the SGP for, for this, but um, I'm happy with my choice in the HEQ5 and it continues to live on after all these years. So lastly, I just wanna share what, what's important in the takeaways for you. I think it's really valuable to consider building a dedicated astronomy rig. I know a lot of you guys do this anyway, where you just don't touch it and it's ready to go at all times. And if it can be semi-portable where you can actually carry the whole thing together without disassembling it, 
even better. The other thing is planning, have a hit list for targets. So of course I can go into Stellarium and set in the exact sensor size and focal length of this telescope and plan my projects out to see what's gonna fit. I have a hit list by month, what I'm gonna shoot. Just being ready for anything and maximizing my clear sky time with this rig. This very much contrasts the last rig I shared in a video, which was the Celestron Edge HD 11 at 2800 millimeters. So that of course will be going as well, continuing to work on that. But this is my wide field deep sky rig that will be running probably almost all the time in the background along with my other rigs. So I'm just really excited about this one and the pictures that I'm gonna take with it. If you're interested in the breakdown of this gear, I'll put a link in the description for each piece. Uh, if you can still find it or not, uh, you know, great. If not, there's other options available. I think the, the idea of this wide field deep sky rig with a DSLR is what the point I'm trying to make here. So if there's variations between it, even better. And you know what, in the comments, share your wide field deep sky DSLR rig if you have one. I know it's a very popular configuration, especially if you travel a lot. I'd love to see some examples of that rig. And until next time, clear skies.